All right, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to get into some more detail uh, for the different types of volcanoes and uh, volcanic landforms. So, uh, to break down, we're going to, in this first video, get into different volcanic systems, different parts of volcanoes, eruption types, uh, uh, parts uh, of the, the system. And we'll talk about the types of volcanoes, the major categories we fit them into. And in the next video, we're going to talk about intrusive features. And then dispersed throughout all of this, I'll be introducing what type of igneous rocks are associated with each type of landform. So uh, these should be familiar to you from when we looked at them in class. So volcanic system, so we've got a few features. The volcano, pretty obvious, so that's that overall uh, um, cone-like shape that we see. So, uh, and here we can see some uh, various examples uh, here of those. So depending on the magma uh, that, that is uh, present at that volcano, how it, that material is erupted, we can get all different types uh, of volcanoes. And here you can see just some examples of the different types that we're actually going to get into in the next uh, a few slides here. So shields, calderas, stratovolcanoes, uh, we've got craters, lava domes, tuff rings, Mars, a lot of, a lot of examples of, of the various types. So each volcano is going to have a vent, and that vent is going to be where the material comes out of. Uh, it's not always going to be at the very top in the peak. Your vents can be on the sides too. Fissures, so fissures are going to be instead of like a single hole in the volcano to erupt material out of, it's going to be a linear feature that uh, uh, is producing all of that, that lava at the surface. So here you can see an example in Hawaii of one of these fissure eruptions. And then of course you have the magma chamber. So that's the pool or blob of magma that we have below the surface that's feeding that volcano. Uh, and a lot of the diagrams that you see um, in your textbooks and uh, in videos and whatnot, the, the magma chamber isn't a nice perfect sphere, or it may not even look like the pictures we see here. But with more technology that we're using, well, with uh, uh, things uh, uh, called seismic tomography where they use earthquakes and see how their speed changes as they travel through these hotter rocks in that magma chamber, we can get a better idea of exactly what these look like. And in some of the videos that you're going to watch in this term, you might see some of these, uh, see these diagrams that have been made. So the types of volcanoes, so uh, we're going to go through all of these. There's cinder cones, domes, shield volcanoes, strata volcanoes, lava plateaus, calderas, mars, tough rings. Lots of different kinds. So cinder cones, uh, uh, if we can see an example here, they're relatively small scale. Um, they uh, can produce lava flows uh, in some cases, but typically we get uh, eruptions uh, uh, where we produce scoria. So we get, uh, so call them cinder. And that's what you see shooting out of this volcano here. That's a lot of gas present. So you get a lot of um, air or gases into your lava as it erupts at the surface. So you get these very highly vesicular chunks that are spewed out of, of this uh, volcano type. And there's usually a central crater at the very top um, or vent where all that material comes from, and then sometimes you can get these basaltic flows uh, moving out. So these typically you see scoria and sometimes basalt. And here's some examples of what those look like. So this is craters of the moon in Idaho where we see a lava flow and then some cinder cones in the distance that are made mostly of, of this scoria as a result. And here's a, an example of one erupting over here. So domes are another type of, of volcanic feature. So domes typically form in the rebuilding stage after an eruption. Uh, the bottom photo here you see is from Mount St. Helens where you have this lava dome building up. It looks kind of like a whale and actually pushing on this glacier. So this is actually ice here that that lava dome is pushing on and forcing it to crack apart. And with this dome growth, we actually saw a lot of melting occurring and some lahars produced. So lava domes, they're, uh, uh, these typically are intermediate to more felsic in composition. That lava is very sticky, so it's not going to run very far away from where it's erupted. So we get this blob that builds up over time, and then as it sits there, it breaks apart, breaks down, and, and just builds this nice dome shape as a result. Very small, uh, fits inside of another volcano and in this case, a stratovolcano that we'll talk about in a few more minutes. 
Here are just a, more pictures of the lava dome. So you can see here Mount St. Helens looks very different than the last photograph because as it grows these different stages, the material can break apart. New eruptions can cause the material to shift around. Uh, but overall we're seeing this uh, increase in size over time. Shield volcanoes are uh, one of the largest types of, of volcanoes that we see. Very, very huge, broad, uh, low profile. The slope is very, very low. And in this case, we have very low viscosity lava flows and magma. That low viscosity, low resistance to flow means that that lava can travel pretty far away from that central vent before it starts to cool. So we get these nice low profiles because that stuff can travel really, really far. And so with these, we end up getting more basalt. And in a lot of cases, these are such big structures that we can get other things forming here too. So we can get fissure eruptions, we can get cinder cones, and we can get calderas, all on this one large volcano. In the case of Hawaii, we have a whole bunch of these shield volcanoes overlapping uh, onto one another, forming these islands. The next kind are stratovolcanoes, so the Cascade Mountains are some great examples of these. Mount St. Helens uh, is a prime example. We from uh, campus or, or uh, from Hood River, the Dells, you can see Mount Hood, you can see Mount Adams. These are two different stratovolcanoes, also called composite volcanoes, where we have in, in some cases there's maybe only one central vent, but in um, a lot of cases we have other vents that, that kind of flank off of, of that central vent, so we get small cinder cones that might develop on that surface. So much, much steeper, we get that classic uh, cone shape with very, very steep sides to that volcano. And in these cases, we have a variety of compositions that we end up seeing. We can see uh, examples of, say, Mount Hood, where we see more andesitic or intermediate type rocks that result, so andesites, we see tufts, we see volcanic breccia, Around Mount Hood, we also see some uh, basaltic lava flows, some dacite as well. Up on Mount St. Helens, that recent eruption produced a lot of pumice and a lot of rhyolite. So some of these, even though they're pretty close to each other, we can get a pretty significant, significant difference in composition, mostly because it depends on how much time that that lava that has erupted on the surface, how much time it's spent underneath that volcano. The longer it's down there, the more and more felsic it's going to get, and the more explosive also that it's going to get. So some other types of volcanoes. So in the gorge, we have what are called lava plateaus. Another example over here is in India. So the, uh, the Columbia River basalts and these Deccan traps in India are two great examples of these lava plateaus that can form. And these typically form from vents, so from fissures that, that form in one part uh, of the country and then erupt this, this very, very low viscosity magma, or lava at the surface that spreads across huge, huge areas because it is just so, so runny. So in the example of the gorge and what we see here, we've got this kind of orangey area on this map is showing you approximately where those Columbia River basalts went. So there were several of these flows that happened, um, over 300 different lava flows to produce these, these layers of basalt that we have in the gorge. Uh, another type are, are calderas, and calderas can vary in size. So Kilauea on Hawaii actually has a pretty small caldera in the, the top of that volcano. Then you can go to, say, Crater Lake, much bigger sized caldera, and then even go to Yellowstone, huge, huge caldera. So basically, uh, the caldera refers to not necessarily the size, but how that depression formed. So we had a, a volcanic eruption that occurred, emptied and drained the magma chamber below, which you can see in this progression we see. And as that happened, the, the, uh, the support for that that volcano on top disappeared. So it collapsed in on itself, forming that depression in the center. In the case of Crater Lake, we actually see some, uh, some vents forming new volcanoes in that lake. The next type all car are called Mars. Um, and uh, Mars are uh, another 
eruption style that you can see here. Uh, it, it, in this case, we end up seeing more phreatomagmatic activity, so where that magma has heated the groundwater and produced a lot of pressure and steam. So in this case, we see um, less of that young material and more of the older material as a result of this explosion that occurs. And then we have tuff rings, which are very, very similar to Mars. The difference here um, is uh, where we have uh, magma interacting with water, um, but in this case, surface water in the case of tuff rings, whereas with uh, Mars, it's going to be more of groundwater. So these end up having, in some cases, some water filling up the inside. And we get this, this small cone that develops that actually contains younger material than the Mars because we have actually some, some uh, uh, ash and lava flows that form as a result. So those are our different types of volcanoes. We'll come back in the next video and talk more about what happens inside the Earth.